Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to get the popular vintage cross-processed look in your photos using Curves and Photoshop's High Pass filter. The cross-processed look comes from an old photography technique where you develop film in the wrong type of chemicals which created color shifts and changes in contrast. You can download the project files for this tutorial including the before image and a Photoshop action that will automatically apply all the adjustments that we make in this video. Let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is duplicate our background layer. So you can either right click and duplicate layer or control or command J. And we're going to name that layer sharpen. Next we're going to go up to filter, other, high pass. And the high pass filter analyzes the high contrast areas in your image. And depending on the size of the radius that you set, it can sharpen the edges of your photo or give it kind of a simulated HDR look. So we're going to set the radius somewhere between 12 and 15. If you set it too big, you'll notice that you start to get kind of a halo effect around the high contrast areas of your image. And if you set it too low, then it gives you a more traditional sharpening effect. So we're going to go up to about 15 or so, maybe a little less, and hit OK. Now we're going to set the blend mode of the sharpen layer that we just created to hard light or overlay. Overlay will typically have a softer look and hard light will usually have a stronger effect. And once you set the blend mode, you can adjust the layer opacity to increase or decrease the effect. So I'm going to take the layer opacity down to about 50% just to make it a little less noticeable. So already you can see the before and the after and it has a kind of a contrastier and grittier look to it. Next we're going to add a curves adjustment layer. And the changes that we make are going to be pretty dramatic because we can always adjust the overall intensity of the effect later by using the layer opacity. So first we're going to increase the overall contrast of the image by adding a slight S-curve on all three channels. And that's represented by this white line. So we're going to take the highlights up a bit and we're going to take the shadows down a bit. Next we're going to switch to the red channel and give it a somewhat dramatic S-curve. So we're going to bring the red highlights up and take the red shadows down. Then we're going to move to our green channel and give it a very slight S-curve, just barely noticeable. So again, green highlights up, green shadows down. And lastly, we're going to go to our blue channel and give it a pretty dramatic reverse S-curve. So it's just the opposite of what we did before. So we're going to take the highlights down a bit and bring the shadows up a bit. And that's pretty much it. Now all you have to do is adjust the layer opacity of the curves adjustment layer if you want to lessen the effect. So we'll bring it down to about 75 or so. And you can also create an action for this, which we covered in another tutorial. That way you can open an image, hit play, and apply all of these changes in just a few seconds. And there's an action for what we just did here included in the project file, so you can download that if you want. So again, you can see the before, and the after. I'm John Shaver for Design Panoply. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.